Hey guys, um, I'm Jacqueline. Uh, welcome to part two of my, as a, as a diehard Swifty, I have to call it my Welcome to New York book unboxing. I already did a these books uh, in my last video, uh, mostly from uh, friends or giveaways or other uh, stuff like that. Now I know a few of these, I have two more boxes, um, and one of them is a mystery box that I purchased. Um, the other I don't remember purchasing, but it's a box, so I assume it is also a mystery box, as it is a mystery to be. Um, so, prepare yourselves. I'm super excited. So I'll have my knife. Okay, I'm really, also, I just would like to bring attention to the fact that this is a um, Marvel Fantastic Four box, which uh, brings me a lot of joy, to be honest. Um, but also, it is taped very intensely. And now I'm like, conscientious of ripping. Um, I don't know, I feel like anytime I open a box that has books in it, I'm like, worried that something's gonna happen to the books when I cut stuff, but I also know that that's entirely irrational because it's literally like I'm tight, sliding a very tiny blade right underneath the tape. But you know, what are you gonna do? Okay. How even is this box constructed? Oh, okay, okay, okay. This is taped very securely. I'm proud. Okay, interesting, interesting. Right off the top are two books by authors I've never heard of. Uh, intriguing. Oh, there's one, there's one I know. So this is Return to Windham by um, Marie de Jolet. Jolet? De Jolet? Sounds French. Um, it says, in another great American Windhaven saga, the continuing chapters of the Bouchard family unfold against the backdrop of the turbulent reconstruction years in the war ravaged South. Oh, interesting. Uh, white against black, Yankee against Confederate, carpetbaggers against Southern aristocracy. Okay, minor beef, Southern aristocracy, by that they mean people who own slaves. So I'm like, we'll see. Uh, young Lucian fights to hold Windhaven range in Texas and struggles to protect his family. Despite continuing and relentless border raids, his father, Luke, marries a beautiful young Lori and starts a new life in New Orleans. Together, he and his bride resolve to share a destiny that will include Windhaven Plantation. Uh, as much of a legend as a home, built with blood, sweat, and tears of Lucy and his grandfather. Okay, I don't... Also, there's definitely, like, a... a... There's definitely like Ku Klux Klan members on the cover of this book. And I think like, yeah, this is gonna be a hard no for me, dog. Um, yeah, I don't read plantation books. And if your book has Ku Klux Klan members on the cover and they're like, looks like they've tied up a young black man. That's a hard no for me. Okay, this is Happiness Hill, Grace Livingston Hill. Hopefully no plantation. Poverty-stricken, hardworking Jane Arleth could not shake the feeling that she did not belong in Lou Lauderdale's wealthy, sophisticated world. Still, as she had, he had taken great pains to see her and made no secret of the fact he fell in love with her beauty. What harm could there be in sampling some of the carefree pleasures he and his circle of friends had to offer? But instead of finding the happiness she seeks, Jane suffers terrible humiliation and pain when she discovers the truth about Lauderdale's world and about himself. Then, just when Jane feels she has no return, she finds help from a mysteriously familiar gray-eyed gentleman. Hmm. I can't tell, based off of the, back to our fun game, based off of the clothing here, I would guess 80s. I would guess this was 80s. Also, this guy here is giving me Peter, not Peter, Jack Callahan vibes with the like leather jacket and the like kind of baggy clothes. And I, I, like, I like Jack Callahan, so that's maybe promising. We'll see, I'm intrigued. Ooh, okay, okay, interesting, interesting. So um, I'm seeing a couple more of these. Um, first, uh, Man Hunting by Jennifer Cruzy. I read my first Jennifer Cruzy last month. I loved it. 
A timeless tale from the first name in romantic comedy. Yes, she is. Absolute queen. Objective, find a rich, handsome, and successful man. Kate Stevens, Kate Svensson may be a dynamic businesswoman, but after three failed engagements, she's decided she's a hopeless, she's hopeless at romance. What she needs is a business plan to help her find Mr. Right. The Cabin's Resort is ripe with elbow bachelors, all rich and ambitious just for type, but they're dro dropping like flies, goodness. Uh, dropping like flies, and after fishing Kate's latest reject out of the swimming pool, Jake Templeton is convinced that Kate is nothing but trouble, especially for him. Okay, there's a sticker over this, so I've got to see if I can peel it back. Yeah, okay, I can't read the rest of that because there's a sticker that I'll need to... Uh, hair, hair dryer, use hair dryer to get off. But uh, I love Jennifer Cruzy. I love the first book that I read by her. This sounds delightful, very excited. Sounds promising. Um, the other one that I saw that was kind of exciting, uh, <laughs> a copy of The Duke and I. Um, I have a copy myself, but this one's in, actually it's a little, it's a little torn up. This, we might have to look at the cover. If it wasn't torn up, I would totally have it find a new home, but uh, this baby is torn. Bummer. Um, we all know the Duke and I is. Yeah, that's such a bummer that it's torn. It's weird that, c'est la vie. Literally, there's like a literal hole. Sad day. Well, shall soldier on. A Regency romance, Barbara Metzger, Cupboard Kisses. Also, I'm a big fan of the clinch on this one. It says, what would a sermon in, what a sermon, sermon. Mm -hmm. What a sermon it would make a vicar's daughter mistaken for a light skirt. Interesting. Uh, when lovely Christabel Swan's inheritance was lost in a card game, she still managed to keep the roof over her head by moving into a rooming house that had once been a part of her estate. Christabel now found herself employed there. Although she promised to make the Dow down at heels place profitable for its new owner, Christabel was hardly prepared for what awaited her. Unwise to London's ways, she suspected nothing untoward about her house full of well-dressed lady, well lady boarders. As they giggled with glee at her naivete, the new owner, Lord Winstoke, received quite the wrong impression when Christabel stepped about town with her new friends. Okay, that sounds funny. Uh, but Winstoke has much to learn about Christabel, who lost not one whit of her propriety when she lost her inheritance. She wouldn't accept... Okay, there's a sticker, so I can't read the rest. Um, this sounds kind of delightful. Very intrigued. I love a book with some sex worker rep. Ooh, is this a step back? Oh, it's a step back. So this is Lily Fair by Kimberly Cates. And it looks like we're in the middle of an ocean, fully clothed, which is a choice to make nonetheless. Uh, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Um, also, it looks like her hair is purple, but I can't tell if that's just me. Ah, Caitlin of the Lilies was born to a terrible prophecy. One day she would destroy Crom, the ever truthful, the rever revered Irish chieftain. Oh. For his own protection, Crom sends her to be raised in a far-off convent. Knowing nothing of her destiny, Caitlin awaits the bridegroom Crom has promised for her, and at last a handsome warrior arrives to escort her home. Caitlin wonders if this proud, silent man is to be her husband. Niall of the Seven Betrayals, wow, name, what a name, has lived for Crom, the king who dared to offer Niall a new beginning. But while traveling to Caitlin, Niall learns of Crom's secrets and faces an unimaginable test of his loyalties. Kill the innocent maiden who trusts herself to his protection or betray his king. Okay, this sounds a little bit like a Snow White and the Huntsman situation, which intrigues me. I think, I love that it's set in uh, Ireland. I wonder if it's like, it looks medieval. There's a little castle on the cover. That is exciting. Um, very intrigued. Okay, I think this is an Amish book, which uh, will also end up being donated because it's just not something that I uh, would choose to seek out, but that's okay. Um, we have a Sabrina Jeffries to wed a wild lord. Sounds fun. Like everything Daredevil Gabe Sharp does, wooing Virginia Waverly is a high stakes game. Ever since her brother Roger died racing Lord Gabriel, Virginia has learned to take her revenge on the reckless Lord by beating him in his own sport. When she challenges Lord Gabriel to a race, the Hellion called the Angel of Death, wow, uh, counters with the marriage proposal. Gabe knows Virginia is in, is in dire financial straits, so why not marry her and solve both her problems? She claims to be appalled by his proposal, but her response to his kisses say otherwise, okay. 
And when the two of them begin to unravel the truth behind Roger's death, Gabe takes the greatest gamble of all, offering the courageous beauty something more precious than any inheritance true love. That sounds delightful. I'm into it. We'll see. All right, then this one is a Cheryl Woods Flowers on Main, Chesapeake Shores novel. Um, when her last two plays are dismal failures and her relationship with her temperamental mentor falls apart, writer Brie O'Brien abandons Chicago and the regional theater where she'd hoped to make a name for herself to return home. Opening Flowers on Main promises to bring her a new challenge and a new kind of fulfillment. But not all is peaceful and serene in Chesapeake Shores. With her estranged mother on the scene and her ex-lover on the warpath, Jake Collins has plenty of reason to want Brie out of his life. But none of those are a match for the one reason he wants her to stay. He's still in love with her. Of course. Jake might be able to get past the old hurt if he knew Brie was home, but is she? Home to stay, but is she? The only way to know for sure is to take a dangerous leap of faith. That sounds intriguing. Uh, also, it sounds kind of wholesome. Uh, we'll see how this one goes. And the last one is by a man. John Le Kelly, corporate lawyer from the house of single and single is shot dead in cold blood. This sounds like a, this is not a romance. Okay, so this mystery box is a bit uh, of an interesting collection. Um, there are a number that probably won't work out for me, but that's fine. I will find them new homes. Um, I think I've got one more box. Yeah, I will say I'm very excited for um, the Jennifer Cruzy and the Lily, Lily Fair and the Sabrina Jeffries. And actually I think the Covered Kisses ones could be, in, one could be interesting. Um, but these are unfortunate. I was actually really bummed about the Julia Quinn. I would love to have a couple uh, versions of this, but there's a hole in the book. It's a no go, my dude. Okay, and then who thought it was a good idea to put KKK members on a book cover? Like who? Who was like, hmm, this is the move. Okay, I have another box, which means it's gonna take me far too long to cut it open. I'm already, I just wanna apologize in advance. Rachel Jones. Oh, she left a little note. Hope you enjoy these, happy reading. Let's see. Oh, this feels, oh my God. <laughs> wow, already very promising. So the first book is What I Did for the Duke by Julianne Long. This was the first Julianne Long book that I read and I think it's my favorite. It's older hero, younger heroine. I think that she's ruined in a garden. For years, he's been an object of fear, fascination, and fantasy. <laughs> But of all the wicked rumors that shadow the formidable Alexander Moncrief, Duke of Falconbridge, the ton knows one thing for certain, only fools dare cross him. <laughs> God, this is such a good book. And when Ian Eversee does just that, Moncrief knows a perfect revenge. He'll seduce Ian's innocent sister, Genevieve, the only Eversee as yet untouched by scandal. First, he'll capture her heart and then he'll break it. Oh, I forgot that he does that, oops. Bit of a scoundrel. Uh, but everything about Genevieve is unexpected. The passion simmering beneath her cool control, the sharp wit tempered by gentleness. And though Genevieve has heard the whispers about the Duke's dark past and knows she trifles with him at her peril, one incendiary kiss tempts, him into a, tempts her deeper into a world of extraordinary sensuality. Yes, absolutely yes to all of the above. Wow. Um, until Genevieve is faced with a fateful choice, is there anything she won't do for the Duke? This book is so good. I loved it. I'm so excited. I literally almost bought this on eBay the other day. So this is perfect. Wow, I'm so excited. <clears throat> okay. Ooh, another, did I just get all Julianne Longs? Oh, actually, I think that that is what happened here. For sure, that's what happened here. Uh, <laughs> I remember what this is now. I got a Julianne Long lot. I think I might have just got Julianne Long. Yeah, I super did. There's a lot of Julianne Long here, but you know what? It's gonna be, <laughs> I totally forgot what this was. Um, someone posted it on Facebook a while ago and it was like someone was selling a bunch of their old romance novels and there was just like these massive lots. And there were a few that went right away and it was literally, okay, this was so funny. Uh, I found out about this like the day I was driving from my grandma's to my parents' house, which is like an eight and a half hour drive, depending on how who's driving and how fast they go. Um, but I found out about it and so, I was like, oh my God, I really want to do this. But I was in the middle of the, I was like in the middle of a nine hour car drive. Um, and my family shares data with, between my sister and my dad and I, and my sister, actually, 
I can't remember if it was Danielle or me that time, but I'm gonna say it was Danielle who used up all of our data. So I couldn't order books, and, and so when my mom pulled in to go for a bit of a walk, just to, like stretch around, I like immediately whipped up my computer. I like found free available Wi-Fi and I ordered some books. Uh, and what I ordered was a massive lot of Julian Long books. Uh, so I got this one, of course, which you just saw. And there's uh, Like No Other Lover. Oh, it has a back step back that's beautiful. Okay, peep the strategy, friends. So good. Wow, that is really stunning. I did not know that she had some back step backs. All right, here's another one. These are interesting covers. I think this is, there's a couple of these that I think are by a different publisher. Interesting, interesting. Because yeah, look at these have the kind of forever logo at the top. Anyways, uh, Runaway Duke. No one can ever accuse Rebecca Tremaine of being a proper young lady. She's wretched at embroidery, pitiful at the piano forte, and entirely too informed about the human body, courtesy of her father's scientific journals. Yes, absolutely, we love it. Uh, and now she's been compromised by a dandy she despises. When her parents arrange a hasty marriage, there's only one man she can turn to for help. No one knows that Irish groom, oh, Connor Reardon is the fifth Duke of Dunbrook, killed, quote unquote, in action at Waterloo, and he wants it to stay that way. Wait a minute, what? But a true gentleman never turns away a damsel in distress. Soon Connor and Rebecca dash away only to be pursued by a dumbling, bumbling highwayman, a scheming duchess, and Rebecca's fiance. Bring, being with the beautiful and desirable Rebecca jeopardizes Connor's secret every day and tests his willpower every night. Ooh, good news. Uh, forever, if there's a reason to bring the Duke of Dunbrook back from the dead, it would be to make Miss Tremaine his duchess. That sounds delightful. Wow, I'm excited. Okay, and this one is Beauty and the Spy. The spy books are great. London's Belle of the Ball, Susanna Makepeace, is the last person who should suddenly be stuck in the sleepy village of Barnstable. In town, she would never have um, seen a man swimming naked in a pond. Okay, I immediately just thought of the scene from Pride and Prejudice where he emerges. So, obviously that was the point of, of this scene in the book. I'm sure it was an uh, inspiration. <laughs> in town, she'd never seen a man naked, swimming naked in a pond. And she certainly would have resisted the urge to draw every single bit of him in astonishing detail. Ooh. Very few people know that Viscount Kit Whitelaw, okay, I love the name Kit, probably just because I like Kit Harrington in Game of Thrones, uh, at least I did. Um, also the name of the prince in the 2016 Cinderella movie, and it's so cute as a name. Anyways, Kit Whitelaw is the best spy in His Majesty's Secret Service, but his high-flying life has finally banished him from London. Not to worry, if Susanna's erotic sketches are any indication of her nature, she'll be delicious stand-in for the thrill of espionage. When accidents follow Susanna's wake, Kit's spy senses start tingling for what better mystery is there for England's greatest spy than the secrets of the delectable puzzle that is Susanna. That sounds phenomenal. Wow, I'm thrilled. Okay, another Julianne Long. I think this is in the same similar series. The Secret of Seduction. Wanton, a vicar's daughter. Okay, second vicar's daughter. Unafraid to control her fate, Sabrina Fairley arrives at an exclusive country soiree, soiree to, uh, to be like Lady Whistledown. Country soiree, uh, met with marriage in mind. How shocking and intriguing to discover her host is an infamous ladies' man known for his indecent and uh, inspiring poetry. Wicked! They call him, it says, it, it, see, it's, it says that. There's an exclamation point. Wicked. They call him the libertine, and his poetry is just as scandalous and irresistible as he is, but after one duel, too many forces Reese Guillory, Earl of Rawdon, from lively London to his country estate. He's in desperate need of a cure for boredom, and the proper but beautiful vicar's daughter seems like the perfect test of his sensual skills. Wondrous. With wit and willness, Reese strips away Sabrina's defenses, but as he teaches her pleasure, the emotional stakes of their sensual duel go beyond anything. We love a duel. Incredible. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. For deep in his past lies the missing clue to the crime that destroyed Sabrina's family and all the libertine seductive secrets may not be enough to save their future in their hearts. Okay, this sounds fantastic. Wow, I'm, oh, okay, I think, I think that I now own three copies of this book, technically one of them is Danielle's. Um, also a back step back, a lot of step backs. Um, rip. Ways to be wicked, dazzling. Sylvie Lamoureux is a darling of Paris Ballet, renowned for her beauty and passionate dedication to her art. But when a mysterious letter sends her across the English Channel, she finds herself literally landing in the lap of one of London's most notorious men. Daring. 
Now the face has charmed many a London lady, the theater impresario Tom Shaughnessy. Okay, so this is to normal people. It's not rich people. That is awesome. He's a theater impresario. Tom Shaughnessy? I hope I said that. Is used to women falling into his arms, but from the moment this feisty young French woman leaps into his carriage, uh, he senses he's met his rival in wit, daring, and sensuality. Lots of sensuality in this book. Uh, I'm here for it. When fate pulls Sylvie into the body world of Tom's theater, a desirable a desire neither of them fully explain, expects threatens to append their well-laid plans. But the past Sylvie never knew she had the will force. The past Sylvie never knew she had the will force. Her to make a decision. Oh, but the past Sylvie never knew she had will force her to make a decision. She can either let it bring down the curtain on their fiery pas de deux or trust this wicked man with her heart. Wow, these sound so good. I'm loving it. Okay, this is a great cover. I kissed an earl and I liked it. <sighs> now I'm just like imagining like romance novel inspired covers of popular songs which would probably be terrible <laughs> okay violet redmond's family and fortune might be formidable and her beauty and wit matchless but her infamous flair for mischief keeps all but the most lion-hearted suitors at bay only violet knows what will assuage her relentlessness a man who doesn't bore her to tears and a clue to the fate of her missing brother she never dreamed she'd find both with a man whose own pedigree is far from impeccable Savage is what the women of the town whisper about the newly styled Earl of Ardenay. Okay, that is very compelling to me. I would, I would like to see that. Albeit with the shivers of pleasure. Born an English bastard, raised in the high seas, he's on a mission to capture a notorious pirate for vengeance. But while Violet's belief in her brother's innocence maddens him, her courage awes him and her sensuality finally undoes him. Now the man who once lost everything and the girl who has everything to lose are, are bound by a passion that could either end in betrayal or become everything they ever dreamed. Oh, this sounds so good. Wow, okay, and then the last book is one that I've read and I'm very happy to own. It is A Notorious Countess Confesses. Actually, have I read this one? I think I have, I can't remember. Oh no, no, I totally have, I totally have. It is so good. All right, so it says, she rose from spectacular heights. That sounded like a Moira rose. She rose from spectacular heights. I think I'm gonna try it. Okay, let's, let's see my best Moira rose. From convent garden. No, ugh, let me see if I can, to courtesan. No, Moira's a hard accent. From convent garden. No, it's not, I can't even do it. You know, I guess it can't be forced. Like, uh, Moira rose just has to kind of, bubble up also i haven't watched Shit's creek in a while so okay normal <clears throat> from convent garden covent garden to courtesan to countess beautiful fearless shamelessly ambitious evie duggan has riveted london in every role she plays but the ton never could forgive her scandalous if shockingly short marriage and when her star plummets amid gleefully vicious gossip the countess escapes to the only legacy left to her a manor house and penny royal green he has the face of a fallen angel and a smolder the devil would envy. God, I forgot this book. Why? What is it about? Yeah. Uh, he's a vicar. Vicar Adam Sylvain walks a precarious line, resisting temptation and the wild ever sea blood in his veins. Adam's strength is tested when scandal, aka the Countess, moves to Sussex, but when a woman who fiercely guards her heart and a man entrusted with the souls of an entire town surrender to a forbidden desire, will the sweetest sin lead them to heaven or make an outcast of them forever? This book is so good. It is very hot. I don't know why, but a vicar will always get me. If you're a vicar, if you're uh, a priest, I will read that book. So that is the end of my haul. I feel like there's a few that are not for me, which is fine, but that's quite a lot of books. Oh, I'm so pleased. I think I am most excited about the Jennifer Cruzy, the Lily Fair, the Sabrina Jeffries to wed a Lord, and then all of the Julianne Longs are going to be great, but I'm ecstatic to own uh, Notorious Countess Confesses, What I Did for the Duke, and very excited to read the other uh, books. I'm very happy. So yeah, that is it for me. Uh, thanks for hanging out, for joining me. Uh, this was literally the best 
way to forget about, I don't know, nine hour days of travel with a cat in tow. Um, I will see y'all next time. Uh, feel free to like, subscribe, comment if you are so inclined. I hope you all have a lovely day. Till next time.